that Representative Hopkins participated in about a week and a half ago, uh, that I believe there were at least three instances where things that were said about me that were untrue. And so what I'm trying to do is either conclude if Representative Pittman had been misinformed, uh, or if uh, Mr. Representative Pittman misinformed people in the room. There are three things that I want to talk about. The first one that I want to talk about is the assertion that somebody on my staff threatened Representative Carl Ford with uh, not having another bill heard if he moved the bill on state religion. And Representative Ford, did you tell Representative Pittman that? No, sir. What I told him was what was said in the press. By the press. Press. But, not, but not in the meeting that's on video and on YouTube. Okay. Uh, so that's one where I feel like in a public setting I was characterized as doing something that I didn't do. That's one Representative Pittman. I'd like to, to know how you feel about that. Well, Paul, I mean, uh, Carl didn't say specifically you, but he told me that he was being told this. That, and, it, uh, and, it was not, and it was not just that bill, but also the, um, what was it, the, uh, that we wanted to run a uh, uh, personhood amendment. Right. And he was told that that would not uh, be something that would be favored, and so uh, we went ahead with that. Did you and I have a discussion about the person that was with the senior leader? What I'm trying to do here is dispel the fact that I'm kind of like waving a wand as an individual and controlling things. Because yeah, I, I, I like, I like it bothers me personally. These, these are discussions that we've had in the senior uh, leadership team meetings and with the, the committee chairs. That's why it was important to me for as many people that wanted to hear it to come here and hear it. Yeah. Carl, didn't you tell me that you were told that if you ran those bills that none of your other bills would be heard? I was told that, not by you or your staff, but I was told that by several people. Okay, so Representative Pittman, in the video, you said, I said it in one case, and you said that my staff said it in another case, and Representative Ford saying that's not true. I would consider that either you being misinformed or misinforming people in the audience. That's all I want to do on that issue. Well, now I want to move to I got more to say on that. Okay. I was expressing my understanding according to what he had said to me. And now that you know that your understanding is false, are you willing to go back in the front of that group and put a video together and realize and say that I falsely accused Representative Tillis? No, story? because I didn't falsely accuse you. I expressed my understanding of okay. what he told me. So, and if I may continue, false. please, I understand that you're very busy and you couldn't possibly personally, directly deal with all the bills that come out here. But the problem is that the captain is responsible for the actions of his crew, and I know your crew is not going to take any action that's contrary to your, uh, print, uh, your uh, policies and guidelines. So you're ultimately responsible whether you personally did it or not. So that's my contention on that. Okay, and Representative uh, Pittman, another thing in the meeting that we talked about was trying to help with the Common Core study. Mm -hmm. And in the video, this is something where you have first-hand knowledge. So I'm curious as to where your position is. I understand we agree to disagree, even though we have people who were used as a reference to what you said in that meeting or agree to disagree on that. The next one was on the uh, Common Core, when you met in my office with four or five other people. And I told you that we all had concerns with Common Core. We wanted to do a study, but we needed to make sure that we unraveled it in a way that didn't hurt us because of the past decisions made with respect to race to the top and a number of other things. And I told you that teachers and superintendents had an issue. In fact, I wanted to get you in front of some of the superintendents because I thought they would be supportive of it. Is that true? Right. Okay. And then at what point... Because in the video, you said that Representative Johnson went on about how good Common Core was. To your recollection, how many times did she say that in that meeting that you then referenced that following weekend? How good it was? I don't recollect it. What I recall her saying is it was a good idea to study it. So how many times did she say that in that meeting, how good it was? I understood her to be saying it. I don't know how many times, maybe once, but I remember uh, that she said uh, that Common Core was a good thing. Representative yeah, Speciality, do you whatever. recall that conversation? I do, and I, and I do remember her uh, uh, acknowledging uh, that she she was supportive of the Common Core, uh, and it wasn't until later, uh, after the meeting, that him and I discussed it, and we were concerned uh, that if she was supportive of it, that this thing might, might get skewed, and this is where, uh, this is where that concern She said in that meeting, she said she was supportive of Common Core? Uh, all, all of her comments were directed towards. Uh, support of the Common Core. And how good it was? Right. 
Okay. She did. There were, there were brief comments, but it was indica indicative of the fact that she was a kind of supporter. And uh, the point, the whole point of the bill is not whether you support or don't support. It was there's too many things on both sides, too many untruths, too many stories, and we need to get down to is this good for North Carolina or not. So we were concerned that there was something in favor that was going to be involved in this. And, and Representative uh, Pittman, were you aware that when you went into this meeting that we had all agreed that we were going to do the Common Core study and that it was going to move? When you went into this meeting? My understanding was it was going to be rolled into this other bill. Okay. And has it subsequently been rolled into the other bill? Yes, it has. Okay. And that was the agreement coming out of this meeting? Right. Okay. Okay. Um, the last thing I wanted to ask, and again, this just goes back, I'm only here to talk about the three specific instances where I feel like I've been disrespected and mischaracterized in this video. And, and it bothers me at a very personal level. The last one is, who on my staff told you we can't do this because he's running for Senate and it'll hurt his chances? That was just expression of my opinion. Okay. That's all it was. Thank you. I was asked, why is this happening? And I, That's, I, but, but Representative Pittman, you need to understand, when you walk into a room like when I walk into this room, you carry a different level of responsibility of attack. When you say something, you don't take it as truth. I know people in this room who have sent email messages and Facebook posts and other things castigating me for the liar and control freak I was based solely on the comments you made in that video. And I can't believe in your heart of hearts that you feel that way. And, you know, we have Ms. Buback here would like to talk about the I-77 calls. No, I'd like to talk about your bullying of our group, your bullying Ms. of Bubeck, the constituents. Ms. Buback, I here to this meeting, and I didn't recognize And I'm here as a constituent, because what you do impacts the MEC GOP. What you do impacts our Ms. party. Bubeck, I'm, not gonna, I'm not here to speak with you. This meeting was set up, and I let Representative Pittman bring whoever was here, but I'm here to talk about a single meeting where I was bullied and I was mischaracterized. And you have bullied people up and down this state. And if you can't take it, then you shouldn't dish it out. You oh, opened this meeting saying you were concerned about the perception. Right. This meeting and the way you have handled this meeting amplifies that same perception. It does nothing to change the what perception. What do I need to do differently then? Pardon? What do I need to do differently? You come in here and, and it's set up. You say, here's issue one, here's issue two, here's issue three, and you've got, you've got people speaking to those issues. Why I not have an open discussion on this, say, and Larry represents me, okay. and I think he's doing a fantastic job representing me. You came in here and made some statements about how you felt in regards to what Mr. Pittman has spoken. Have you received an apology from Mr. Pittman for the things that he has said? Uh, I would ask you to take a look at the letter and decide for yourself if it's, if it's an apology. The people that tried to spin it up say, what an apology, it was a clarification. So, I mean, I took it for what it was. Um, I guess if, uh, if you were sitting in, in my, Mr. Long? Correct. If you were sitting from my position when you feel like uh, the way that people would have walked out of that meeting, did, did Representative Pittman's statement put into question whether or not the way I was characterized in that meeting was fair, and that way was it an apology? No, I don't think I've been apologized to. And I'm not looking for that. I'm just looking for uh, the, the, a, a truthful discussion around these issues. With respect, sir, I have read his letter, and I took it as an apology to you. And I think Mr. Pittman has done the honorable thing. I think he has acknowledged the fact that he said some things that could have been spoken a little differently. I think he's done the honorable thing by you. And, sir, on behalf of all of the folks that are here, I think we would request that you do the honorable thing, accept his apology, put it behind you, move forward with doing the people's business here in this office. Okay? That's all we're asking for, is that he be treated fairly. I believe that Mr. Pittman did issue a public apology to you, a written apology to you, and has made that public all over the, the uh, every way that it possibly can, been on the internet and the newspaper and the TVs and everything else. I think it's time that, that we put our big, big boy pants on and say, okay, we've, we have come to agree to disagree on some things. We've got water under the bridge now. Mr. Pittman has done his apology, 
And I think it's time that we, like I said, put that behind us. Except, except the, the fact that, you know, sometimes in the heat of the moment, things are said that maybe could be better stated had we had time to speak uh, or to think about what we're going to say. But, sir, I think it's time now for us to put this behind us, put our big, pants, big boy pants on, I heard and let's go ahead. Twice, and, and I have big boy pants on every day with all due respect. That's why I'm sitting in this room trying to solve this problem. Uh, you know, I don't, uh, that was fine up to that point. I'm trying to show you some respect. I think that kind of comment's not really showing respect. And that's where you started at a, at a respectful dialogue. I would never and have never said a single derogatory thing about a single one of y'all in this room. Publicly. And uh, never have we, sir. And, and so, I mean, a part of this is just having the, the but, you know, I, I can let that go, but I just don't have my, I would never let my, one of my members say that in a meeting. I mean, it's just not a respectful, professional way to, to be a legislator. Now, I don't, I, I'm not concerned about an apology at this point. You know, to be honest with you, I, I feel like I was wrong. And I don't know if I'll ever get over that. But I don't need that anymore. I could be my representative as well. Uh, I've heard your three points and I've heard the discussions going on here. I would just like to know that uh, what are your intentions now when you and your organization in respect to Larry Pittman after the fact are, I mean, is it going to be where you can try to work together again or is there going to be some sort of background thing going on here? I don't know if Representative Pittman will remember this, but it's probably the best evidence I can give for how I operate. Bless you. Uh, in 2010, when I was trying to run to get us to a majority, uh, that was the first time I met Representative Pittman. Uh, I met him at Starbucks over in his neck of the woods. And I asked him if he'd consider not running in a primary against Jeff Barnhart. And I said, it is nothing against you, Representative Pittman. It is about a member that I can help raise money and potentially win other districts so we can get to a majority. Uh, when we're in a majority, he can run or not. He, he chose to run anyway. And I made him very angry in that meeting, so much so that he posted on Facebook things about me that, you know, I was playing games in the district and going in there and providing. Uh, they were in Facebook representative Pittman. I've still got a copy of them. Uh, the reason I'm here is actually for the Bill 267, but now that Larry Pittman has come out opposing this bill, and different women's groups. 267? I haven't. The half yeah. no, yeah. yeah. Let me clarify myself, opposing the tolls. But speaking of bullying, and this doesn't have anything to do with that other issue, and I know you're hurt, in a hurry, but our women's groups, our, my party chair, of the Iredell County Party, Republican Party chair, Everybody I know has gotten telephone calls about a spreading false information as far as you accuse me of spreading false information. Um, and it's like, if, so, if somebody's spreading some false information, please tell me what this false information is. We're talking about the toll information? Yes, and that, that, that's the whole issue. That's the only reason I'm here. And it's, it's like, but I was speaking with about the bullying, and you know I'm a very active volunteer. And I don't hold any kind of office. I just, I'm pulling for the Republicans. <laughs> I work very hard. Well, you know, you but know, there's first. a lot of intimidation going on there that is about to make me become an independent, is what I'm trying to tell you. I, you know, I, I feel like the concern that I have with the toll project, uh, is I've spent about, every year that I've been here, I've been involved in transportation policy stuff. Mm -hmm. If I honestly believe it was a better alternative, I would go for it. If I wanted to do the populist expedient thing, I would go for it. Because most people don't know really what's going on with it, and there's a, there's a group that has a lot of passion around it. But I, in my heart of hearts, believe it's the best policy that we could possibly have up there. You said a moment ago, I'm here to get every Republican member back. Does that include Larry? Absolutely. Would you be willing to say that publicly? I'm here to get every Republican member back. And that's something that we can quote? Well, yeah. 
If, uh, if, and the reason if, if, if well, let me, there's a, as long as any, every Republican member that's in good standing, we have a long standing tradition. I impose it on myself, it's not a rule, to not uh, openly uh, uh, campaign against them. Because you, know, you know, Mr. Sink told people that you were funding him. And okay. you know that Mr. Sink and I never had a discussion about it. Uh, again, well, we Mr. wouldn't know that. All we would know is what Mr. Sink told us. And I've met with Representative Speciality in my office more than once, talked to him several times about bills and rumors that he's heard. He's heard somebody I was going to run, I was recruiting a candidate to run against him. The only caveat that I will give you is right now and for the last four years since we've had a plan of organization, all Republican members have been in good standing with the caucus. And any Republican member in good standing with the caucus, no leader in the caucus is allowed to run against. Members not in good standing, which means that a three-fourths majority, I think, of the caucus uh, vote to more or less censure someone, do not enjoy the same protections as members in good standing. And right now, Representative Pittman is in fine standing with the caucus. Will he stay that way? He will, unless three-fourths of the members of the caucus decide otherwise. 